You know, life can often seem like a series of missteps and mistakes. Sometimes we can feel so bound by the guilt of what we've done that we actually start to believe forgiveness and redemption is not possible. Hey, I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, and you're watching the Midweek Refill. In this week's episode of the Midweek Refill, we're going to go through the scriptures to talk about the fact that it is possible to get beyond guilt and how you can learn to live beyond the mess. Welcome again to this week's episode. Stay tuned. And welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host, and I'm excited to share this week's teaching with you. Please do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, and do hit that notification bell because that will enable you to be notified every time new content is loaded. And we bring you greetings from the New Mountaintop Church, where I am pleased as punch to serve as senior servant, senior pastor, and the under-shepherd of God's amazing flock. Well, this week, we're going to be talking about something very serious, getting beyond guilt, learning to live beyond the mess. Question for you, and I already know the answer. Have you ever made a mess in your life? Of course you have. And when you have made mistakes, blunders, errors, sins, and the like, it can feel very much like everybody knows it and that all of the fingers in the world are pointed directly towards you. You know, guilt can be a situation where maybe you have found yourself in a position where you've lied, where you have told a mistruth in order to save your neck or to win the affluence or attention of someone else. And then sometimes dealing with guilt can feel like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. There's nothing like guilt to make you feel as if all of life is on your back. Have you ever been there? Well, here's the deal. There are times that we have to make decisions relevant to temptations and how we're going to handle them. There are times that we've got to learn how to say no and Sometimes we're even tempted to go beyond what we should in terms of our relationships. You can be tempted in your relationships and fail that test and not do what you are supposed to do. Equally, on our jobs, sometimes we can be tempted to fudge some numbers or to share some information that's not quite true. And again, find ourselves caught up in all sorts of tempting situations. We all have the responsibility to make wise choices from our health to our diet to our decisions. And all of these are decisions that we must make each and every day of our lives. If we fail at making the right choices, we will live with guilt. And guilt has a way of going with you. Even if you change states, change clothes, change your name, change your hair. But here's the good news. God has given us a way to get beyond guilt. God has already provided a way for us to get beyond guilt. And friends, that's awfully good news in the days and times that we're living in. Psalm 51 is an amazing chapter that helps us to see the goodness of God in terms of getting beyond guilt in our lives. Now listen, Every single one of us makes mistakes. Mistakes happen in all of our lives. Now, some of the mistakes are intentional and deliberate, while others may be a mishap, a slip up. And I want you to look at this picture on the screen because we see something very valuable here. At the other end is a point, a lead pencil point, number two pencil. But on the back side of it is an eraser. And thank God, 
that for every mistake we can make in our lives, even if we can't fix it, even if we can't return to the place we once were, thank God that we have a God who has an incredible eraser that he can use to help us clean up what we've messed up, even when we might not be able to make up with the people that we messed up with. And that's awfully good news today, to know that our God is able to help us fix those things that are broken. So let's look today at the scriptures, and I want to talk about Psalm 51 a bit, the backstory of David and Bathsheba. Now, of course, it's important for us to understand that even when we mess up, God has grace for every mistake, for every mess up. And it is possible to get beyond guilt. And so we're going to look at some lessons from Psalm 51 to help us understand how important it is to get beyond guilt. Now, Psalm 51, the backdrop of it is that David, while king, sends his army out to battle and he stays home, which is probably mistake number one. Well, it's mistake because his purpose was to lead in the war, to lead in the battle. And it's hard to lead when you're not present, when you're not there with your eyes on the battleground. It's hard for you to lead at home. Well, here's mistake number two. David walks out on his rooftop and he beholds there a woman who is bathing outdoors, which was quite common in their time for people to take baths outside. Only problem was that this particular woman was married and her husband was off at the war. Well, David decides that what he's going to do is take her, impregnate her, and he has to hide his sin. And when he finds out that there's a child being born, David then sends her husband Uriah out to the front of the battlefield to essentially have him killed. What he doesn't know is that he's carrying his own death letter in his hand. Well, after Uriah is killed, David gets word. God then touches the heart of the prophet who comes to David and confronts him about his sin. And when we read the words of Psalm 51, what we are literally seeing is a repentant heart of King David as he comes back to his senses and ultimately back to God. And that's what God wants for every one of us. You see, it is possible to get beyond guilt if we learn the lessons of Psalm 51. So let's get into the lessons of the scripture. And also don't forget that down in the description box below, there is a free PDF that you can download to enjoy and engage a little bit deeper and further with this teaching. So let's move into point number one of lessons that we learn from Psalm 51. And here it is. Number one, acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge your sin. And this is based on Psalm 51, verse number one through verse number four. And here we find these words. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. David goes on to say, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Now, please understand this. If we are going to be freed from guilt, we have to, number one, acknowledge our sin. Listen, don't run from it. In fact, run to God in it. Acknowledge your sin. And to acknowledge means that you confess it to God, that you openly confess God, I have wronged you. God, I have done that which is not pleasing in 
your sight. So it's important for us to understand that while people may never forget or forgive the sins that we commit in our lives, we have a faithful God who is faithful and just to forgive us and to even forget the wrong that we've done in our lives. And so if you want to get beyond guilt, then you have to understand the importance of openly confessing your sins to God. Now let's move to the second point because this is very powerful equally. The second lesson that we learn from Psalm 51 concerning getting beyond guilt is to seek God's mercy. Seek God's mercy. Please notice where mercy comes from. Mercy only comes from God. So let's look at what David said here. David says, have mercy on me, O God. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Now he repeats the same thing in verse number seven. Have mercy on me, O God. Why does David repeat this? Because David understands where mercy and help comes from in your time of lowness and weakness. It comes directly from God. So David says, let me call on the one who I know is capable of giving me what it is that I need, and that is God himself. And look at what else he says. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Hyssop is a cleansing agent that would be used in the times of David. And so he says, I know I'm dirty. I need to be made clean. So God cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. What a powerful statement that David makes here. Because David understands that if I'm going to be right with God, there's only one way. And that is, I've got to seek God's mercy. And family, if you're going to be right with God, if you're going to ever get beyond the guilt in your own life and the mistakes of your own past, then you too must learn to seek God's mercy. Now, David family teaches us something very powerful here because what we see is David threw himself on God's mercy, knowing, knowing that God's love and compassion are greater than any sin. And let me just say that again, because I don't want you to miss this. This is so powerful. David threw himself on God's mercy, knowing that God's love and compassion are greater than any sin. And what a reminder that is for you and for me, that no matter how great the mess, God's Mercy is greater than the greatest mess. And so when you mess up, and you will, it may not be something that's on the news or something that is earth shaking and career killing and all of that. But when you make mistakes, and when I make mistakes, we must remember that there is a God upon whom we can throw ourselves on the mercy of his court knowing that God's love and God's compassion are far greater than any sin that you and I can ever commit. And I love God for that because God has more grace than we have disgrace. God has more mercy than we have mess. And that's what we learn from Psalm 51. But let's go a little further into this Psalm and see what David teaches us concerning the mercy and grace of God. The third principle here, if we're going to get beyond guilt, we must learn these lessons from Psalm 51. The third principle is that we must desire a clean heart. Desire a clean heart. You see, David didn't just want clean hands. He wanted a clean heart. Let me show it to you in Scripture. David says in verse 10 of Psalm 51, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit 
within me. Look at this. He wants a pure heart. David recognizes that it's not just an issue of my hands. It's an issue of my heart. And David wants a pure heart before God. And that's why he says, the only way I'm going to get it is, God, you have to create it in me. Now, the heart is always a symbol of the affections and the attention of the mind. So really, he was saying, God, if you will purify my mind, my actions will fall in line. So he created me a pure heart, oh God. And watch this next part, because this is so very powerful. He says, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. What is David saying here? David is essentially saying, I need God to touch my mind so that my actions can align with God's divine will for me. But watch this. This is where it really gets powerful. David says, I also have a problem with consistency, and I want God to give me a consistent spirit. Watch this. He says in that second part, the latter half of verse 10, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now, here's what makes that so incredibly powerful. David says, if I am left to my own devices, I'm going to get out of renewal with God. So every single day, this will be a daily prayer that we need to all pray. God, renew me this morning because I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders. I got the pressure of the world on my shoulders. I got the influences of social media on me. God, renew within me a spirit that is steadfast. Steadfast literally means to be fastened, to be secure. It means it's not wavering, it's not shifting around, it's not moving around, but it is is constant. David didn't just want to be forgiven, he wanted a change of heart. Part of the problem with many people today is that when they mess up, they're not concerned about having real change. A lot of times, they just want to be excused. Just use the eraser. Everybody forget about what I've done. Hey, we all make mistakes. Hey, 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 you know, we can't judge each other and only God can judge me. Don't you just love that quote? David said, I need more than just being excused by the people. What I need is a change of heart. That is to say, a change of my mind. And I need God to do it every day to renew it in me, renew in me renewing me that steadfast spirit. He says, renew a steadfast spirit within me. That's a prayer that every man ought to pray every single morning. Not only every man, every woman, not only every woman, every child ought to pray that prayer every day. God, renew within me a steadfast spirit. I want to stay on track. I want to do things right. I want to do things your way. And if you want to do right, God will help you to do right. Yes, he will. God will help you to do right. If you're getting anything out of this, please make sure you leave a comment, like, share, subscribe. And also don't forget that down in the description box is a free PDF. You can download it, print it, send it to your friends. Continue this Bible study. Have your own little group and have access to the discussion questions that go along with today's teaching. Here's principle number four. If we're going to get beyond guilt, we got to learn these lessons from Psalm 51. And the fourth principle is accept God's forgiveness. Again, accept God's forgiveness. Now, here's the thing about forgiveness. God will grant us forgiveness, but we have to accept it. All right, let me give you a very practical example. A package came to my home certified mail uh, last week or so. And the mail carrier brought it to my front door, rang the doorbell, and stayed there until I came to the door. Because she was not going to leave that certified package without a signature. And so I had to sign to say, I am the recipient and I have taken possession of the letter. Well, 
Forgiveness works the same way. God's not just, not just going to leave it at the front door. You got to receive it. You got to acknowledge it as your own personal package from God. And God wants to give that to you. David says in Psalm 51, 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Now, this goes back to what I said a moment ago about the fact that we need God to renew within us a mindset that keeps us stable and sturdy in our daily activities. Look at it again. He says, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Now, this is also powerful because here's what David is implying. When we have lost the joy of our salvation, come on, every now and then we all get stale on God. Every now and then we all feel as if we are losing that edge, that excitement, that enthusiasm with God. David says that's a telltale sign. It's an impl implication. That's a telltale sign that you're in trouble of falling. It's when you have lost the joy of your salvation. When you no longer feel God's presence the way you used to. That's a sign that you're in jeopardy of a fall. When you no longer spend that time with God that you once did, again, that's a sign. And the prayer you need to pray, if you're right there right now, is right here. Psalm 51, 12. Restore to me, God, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So David was quite honest with God in his prayer here about the fact that there are times when I need a refresh. Your phone needs a refresh. Every day, you should recycle your phone, turn it off, turn it on, because certain updates won't come without a fresh signal. The same is true with your spirit. You need a fresh signal from God on a daily basis. And so accepting God's forgiveness means believing that he has truly washed away our sins and that we don't have to live under the weight of guilt. That ties in with this verse. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And when you understand where your salvation comes from, family, it means that you can accept your package of forgiveness, believing that God has truly washed away our sins and that we don't have to live under the weight of guilt. <sighs> that blesses me right there. Let me give you a fifth point today. And here's number five. Share your experience. Share your experience. Let's look at what David says in Psalm 51, verse 13. David says, then, after you have cleansed me and made me whole again, then I will teach transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. And I love this. I love this. David is saying, God, do this for me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Make me pure. And here's the purpose of my request it's not that my kingdom will be restored. It's not that my name will be saved. It's not that I'll get out of the tabloids, but I want to win other people to you. I want my testimony to matter. You see, when we've received forgiveness, we have a testimony to share. But how often do we tell it? How often do we let others know that God has forgiven me and cleansed me? Listen. I know you can't tell your testimony to everybody because everybody can't handle the truth of where God has brought you from. But when you know what God has done for you, you have a testimony to share. And I want to challenge you, tell your testimony. Let others know what God can do based on what God has done in you, through you, for you, around you, and about you, and in spite of you. I always enjoy bringing these teachings to you. I hope, trust, and pray that you've gotten something out of today's teaching. If you have, like, share, leave a comment. There's a PDF right down there in the description box below where you can access a full handout of today's teaching. It comes with personal discovery questions that will take you on a deeper dive into the scriptures. And know that we love you here at the Midweek Refill. God bless you. Uh -huh.